Okay, so um, these are words that I think you would have heard. Monomial, bi we talked about that. Binomial, trinomial, and polynomial. Oops. Monomial means what? Mono means one. Where else have you heard that mono before? Okay, good. What, can you remember when, like exactly when? Because I can't think of it, but you've heard of it. Yeah, good. Any, anybody, any music fans in here? You know, like mono music versus stereo music? Have you heard of that? Mono, like even when I was a kid, there were stereo systems that were mono, which means the left and right channel are not different. They're the same sound coming out of both. That kind of exists today, but not very much. Pretty much everything is stereo, which is two channels. So that's one, pl one place that in the past, at least, mono, you might have thought about music or audio, that kind of thing. But mono definitely means one, What's that? One term? So like 2x a squared 3m n. It, the, the last one there has two variables, but because everything is being multiplied, it's a single term. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about terms, is the things that are being multiplied together. What about binomial? What does that mean? It means two. Where do you know by from? Anybody in here ride a bicycle? Why is it called a bicycle? Because it has two wheels, so by means two, right? So two terms. Now, it's interesting, and this is just a language thing. What do you call, not a bicycle, but a cycle with one wheel? Yeah, it's not called a monocycle, is it? It's called a unicycle. So uni also means one, so there's, that, that's the confusion of the English language, unfortunately, is that in different situations, they use these different prefixes, is what they're called, right? Sometimes we use mono, uni, all different kinds of things. Two terms. So x plus 3, um, a squared minus 7a, 5mn plus n squared. I don't know, just making them up, right? But notice how now I've got two things that are added. I can't actually add them because they're not like terms but that makes it a binomial. When we were doing distributive property, there's a binomial. Uh, let me find another one. There's a binomial. Being multiplied by something, but that's a binomial. Right? So we have seen these before and worked with them. What do you think trinomial means? Three terms. Where do you know tri from? Tricycle. I like it, right? When you're a kid, maybe you don't ride a bicycle yet, you ride a tricycle. What else? There's another big one. Triangle. Yeah, very good. Triangle. Why is it called a triangle? Three sides and three angles. Right? Literally triangle. <laughs> so th three angles. Very good. Um, so A plus B plus C. X squared plus 7X plus 12. Those are things with three terms. Take a look at the previous lesson. There's a trinomial. Wasn't there another one here? 3D, 2C, 8G. 
So maybe you've got uh, five apples, two bananas, and ten grapes, something like that. I don't know. Three terms. What about poly? It actually, yeah, very good. It actually is sort of more than one. It just means many. It's not specifically defined, but if you had three, you would call it a trinomial, and if you have more than three, we would call it a polynomial. So you're right in that sense. That's how we use it in a classroom. Technically, it really just means more than one, like many, but yes. So many, or more than one, But we use it for, for we, we would call something that has more than three, we would call it a polynomial. So x cubed plus x squared plus x plus three. That's got four terms, so that would be called a polynomial. A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus dot 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 and so on. You get the idea. So polynomial is kind of a catch-all term for all these different kinds of things that we talk about. So we're specifically right now working with monomials, like for today. Then we're going to extend this to other things tomorrow. We're going to come back to distributive property tomorrow. When multiplying monomials, we identify the different parts of each monomial or each term. Multiply together the matching parts. Remember what the word coefficient means? So the coefficients get multiplied together and the variables get multiplied together. X's with X's, Y's with Y's, A's with A's, B's with B's. Numbers with numbers. That's what I mean when I say identify the different parts of the monomial and multiply the matching parts. Okay, does that make sense? Now here's the question that I have for you. When multiplying powers with the same base, anybody remember what the rule is? What do you do with the exponents? Add. You add the exponents, very good. So fill in that blank. So the first one's straightforward, it's x, it's x's only. If you compare it to the next one, that also has numbers. So x squared times x cubed, if I add the exponents, this is the hard part. Even if you know the rule, you're thinking about multiplying, so you go two times three. But that's not what you're supposed to do, because I just said add the exponents. No, not three times three. So you get five. So how do you write it? It's not equals five, it's x to the five. The exponent becomes the exponents added together. Why? x times x times x times x times x. When I look at exponents, x squared is two x's multiplied by x cubed, which is 3x's. Whoops. Well, isn't that 5x's? Right? And they're all multiplied together. The fact that this was a group of 3 and that was a group of 2 doesn't really matter in the end. So I've got 5. That's why. Some people really like to know why. You have to remember the rule. Multiplying powers with the same base, you add the exponents. Okay, next. 2x times 3x squared. So this is where, again, it starts to get jumbled up a little bit because now we're doing different rules for different parts. What is 2 times 3? 6. What's the exponent on this x? It's a 1. So it's invisible, but it's a 1. So 1 plus 2 is 3.
So that's the answer, 6x cubed. See if you can try this one on your own. At least get it started. Okay, what'd you get? Twenty? How'd you get twenty? Four and five, very good. So twenty. Anybody else get twenty as the first part? Very nice. And then the next part is a. A to the six. How'd you get six? You add them. So this is why it gets jumbled in our brain because we're multiplying. Then we have to swap over to adding. And you just have to get used to that again. Practice, 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 right? So 28 to the 6, very good. Anybody else get 8 to the 6 as well? Awesome. Okay, good. Ooh, starting to get harder. Do the numbers, do the M's, and then do the N's, right? Mat matching parts. So 3 times 4, 12. M squared times N cubed is M to the what? Five. five. Two plus three is five. And then N to the one, again, that's got a one, times N squared. N to the three. One plus two is three. Good. Why do we care about this? Well, this is a little bit less writing than that. It's a little bit more simple. It's like it's not as complicated, it's not as long. And maybe I have to do something with it in the next step of a question or something like that. Right? So this is just practicing skills to make the equations or the expressions that we're working with to make them more simple, to make them easier to work with. And sometimes that might be a useful thing to do. This kind of thing isn't really the kind of thing that we're going to see a lot of. This is more just for practicing skills in math class. Okay? So eventually we'll get back into doing some real world applications of things. And this is not the kind of thing that we'll see a lot of. But it does help us sort of understand the bigger picture of what's going on. Okay, so what's the coefficient of this first term? There isn't one there, so what is it? It's a 1. So 1 times 2 times 5. Again, folks, strategy, you could always get out your calculator when the numbers, and this may not be a case where you have to do that, but if the numbers are big or they're not friendly or there's integers because none of these have been negative but they could be, or there's decimals or fractions, pull out your calculator and let your calculator do the multiplying, but you know that it's 1 times 2 times 5, which is 10. Very nice. Two and one and one. So you add all of them together, right? We've got three different monomials that we're multiplying together. Monomial, monomial, monomial. But we're multiplying to together to get one monomial. And so we add all the exponents. So that's to the four. And then y is one and three and one. So that's five. Okay, on the back. So that's the part that we're going to be using a lot of for the next couple of days. And they won't be super complicated multiplying, but you have to have that idea of adding exponents. We will be doing a little bit of dividing later in the week. But again, it'll be a little bit more simple than what we're doing now. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's a typo. <laughs> There's not supposed to be an S there. I don't know how that happened. Okay, so dividing monomials. Notice that A and B, I'm both, I have a monomial on top and a monomial on bottom. If we're multiplying the monomials and we like multiplying powers with the same base variables, we add the exponents. What do you think you do when you divide 
powers of the same base. Very good. Subtract. Multiplying and dividing are opposite operations. Adding and subtracting are opposite operations, right? Otherwise, it's the same. So I do 18 divided by 3. Again, if you need your, to pull out your calculator to do that, then do it. 18 divided by 3 is 6. Okay, but if you can do it in your head, all the better. What's the A part? Uh, two. two, yeah, good. So sometimes our brain automatically adds when we're supposed to subtract, but good, you caught your own mistake. Three minus one <laughs> is two. Straightforward and simple because it's just a coefficient, just the number and just one variable. And then we start to get into some harder ones that have multiple variables, but you're matching up parts. Numbers with numbers, X's with X's, Y's with Y's, right? 25 divided by 5. X to the 4 divided by X. X to the 3, X cubed, very good. And then again, 6 minus 3 is 3, so that's Y cubed. See how that works? Okay, and finally, to make it even more complicated, to make it even more complicated, then we do powers of monomials. So I take a monomial, which has an exponent, and I raise it to another exponent. And again, sometimes we're multiplying, sometimes we're adding, sometimes we're using powers, like all of, and powers are a type of multiplying. So all of these things start to get mixed up in our brain. And that's normal, that's common. That's why these are hard rules to memorize, all of them, until you've just done enough practice and you kind of get it. Anybody know this one? The exponent applies to everything in the brackets. When you take a power of a power, what do you do to the exponents? You multiply, good. So if you're multiplying powers or multiplying monomials, you add the exponents. But if you're doing a power of power, you multiply the exponents. Boy, that's confusing. Until you've done enough of it that it just, you just get it, right? So if this was uh, x squared times x cubed, I would get x to the fifth like we saw before. But in this case, it's 2 times 3, so it's x to the 6. Actually, I'm going to write that out. 2 times 3. Hmm? Oh. Okay, next one, again, very, can be very confusing. Just like, it might make sense when you're watching somebody else do it, but when you have to do it yourself, it's so specific. And there's so many different little rules that you get them mixed up. This three on the three means three cubed, which is what? Twenty-seven, or three times three times three. Twenty-seven, right? And then I also have x to the fourth, all to the third, which is x to the twelve. Four times three, or three times four, twelve. 
I put them together for my answer and it's 27x to the 12. But this is my point. The 3, I did multiply by 3 to get 9. It's 3 cubed. 3 times 3 times 3. Right? 3 to the exponent of 3. Whereas it's not 4 to the exponent of 3. It's 4 times 3. The, like, do you see how confusing this can get? And it might, and like I said, it might feel easy when we're doing this together, but then you have to go and do it yourself. It's very easy to mix up these rules. Okay? So 3 to the 3, 27, and then x to the 12 because it's 4 times 3. Okay, a couple more. Oops, I lost it. There it goes. So we did this before. This is like a negative 1. What would negative 1 to the 4 be? Four. Not 4. four two. Is it positive or is it negative? negative? Why negative? Who wants to explain? Well, this is, it. yeah, that's true, but this is in brackets. So when I multiply it out four times, this is like negative m squared n. You don't have to write this down. You can just watch if you like. Like, that's what that means, right? This monomial raised to the exponent of 4 means multiplying it four times. Two, two, two negatives makes a positive. positive. Two more negatives makes a positive. positive. So everything's positive. So the answer should be positive. What the rule that we talked about, whether you think of this as a rule or you just think about the concept, if it's an even exponent, so 2, 4, 6, or 8, and the negative sign is inside brackets, you're going to end up with a positive because they're going to cancel out in pairs. If that was cubed, your answer would be negative. Okay, so it's going to be positive, which you don't have to write, but I'm going to write it out. m to the... 8, 2 times 4 is 8. n to the... 4, 1 times 4 is 4. Last one again, we start kind of putting some of these different things together. Everybody got that okay? Two brackets side by side means multiply. Bed mass says, what do I do first? There's, which is absolutely true, but there's nothing to do inside the brackets because it's all already kind of simplified, so I can't do that. So next. Exponents, yeah, not times, but 3 to the 2. So I do the exponent first. Okay, so 3 squared is 9. Alex, you want to do the rest? What's the exponent on those as well? Uh, two. Also 2. Yeah, very good. So they all had exponent of 1 multiplied by 2, so they all end up with exponent of 2. I'm keeping that in brackets because I'm still multiplying. So negative 5 cubed, is it going to be negative or positive, the rule we just talked about? Negative. negative. 5 times 5 times 5, or 5 cubed is 125. That might be a very good example of when you pull your calculator out. If you don't know that in your head, 5 times 5 is 25. Could you do 525s in your head? Yeah, I think you could. 425s is a dollar, is 100. So another 25, a dollar 25. Right? Thinking about money when you're talking quarters or dimes or something is a good strategy. This is something familiar to us. X cubed all to the 3. 
Remember, it's not 6. We're not adding. Because that would be if it was x cubed times x cubed. So it's 9. 3 times 3 is 9. But again, just pointing out how much you can confuse all these different rules in your head. And then y to the 1 all cubed is y cubed. Now what do I do? Now I'm multiplying monomials. So I do 9 times 125. What did I leave out on the calculator there? So is that a mistake? No, because I know that a positive and a negative make a negative. So I did that part in my head. y squared times y to the 9. Sorry, x. I don't know why. Oh, my gosh. I'm losing my mind. x squared times x to the 9 is? Yeah. What would you say? 11. x to the 11. So notice here I multiplied because it was a power of a power. And here I'm adding because you're multiplying them. Lots to remember. y squared times y cubed is y to the 5. Again, 2 plus 3 is 5. And z, I only have that 1, so z squared. And that's the finished answer to that one. That's as simple, as simple as we can make it. We can't go any further, so we're done. Okay, so multiplying monomials, dividing monomials, and then powers of monomials and then combining all of them a little bit together is the takeaway. So maybe some slightly harder algebra today, but again, this is where math goes. Okay, so it is important that you uh, start to get comfortable with these rules.